Documentation. The thing you never write, you wish there was more of, but you never read it anyways. Let's talk about it. I wanted to add a blog to my website, so I looked at the marketplace for blog templates. Most used ones had a typical setup of a block of text that can be formatted with a rich text element. While that setup that works, that gets you most of the way there, I wanted more. I want fancy things like an image with a caption below it, have text flow around an image, maybe add YouTube videos responsively, even highlight some code blocks, pop up a table of contents on the side, or even have some pull quotes or some notes in the middle of the text, in any order I want. All of that will consist in design and formatting. I set out to research how smart people solve this problem. How does Coda or Notion do it? How do headless CMSs like Prismic do it? One of the blog templates that caught my eye was Boston's. It turns out it's all about repeating groups. Based on that, I created a first prototype. It was beautiful, modular, but it was a huge pain to edit, a monstrosity. I wanted editing as easy as markdown, but how can I transform a block of text magically into stylized blocks? Wait a minute, that's programming. Let's build a simple markdown editor for a blog. Start with the database, just data type article with fields title and body. On the editor page, we make this a page of type article and we have the typical markdown layout, editor on the left, preview on the right. Add a simple workflow to say that when the multi-line input value changes, it saves it to the database. Let's look at the preview element. That's gonna be a repeating group. The source will be the multi-line inputs value, but the repeating group expects a list. So we need to break that value down into a list of texts. We do that with regex. Let's use this pattern of dot plus. That will make sure that it breaks everything into lines, skipping empty lines. If you want to include the empty lines, you just do dot asterisk. Let's drop a text element in the repeating group and we wire this with the parent's text and see what it looks like. We got the original text split into little lines showing in the repeating group. Let's get our header working. So first we're gonna hide the text element, only show it when the parent text matches this pattern. We now style this element as a H2. Why H2? I'm considering the title of the article will be H1 and everything else will be down from there. We can then repeat this same exercise for H3 and H4. Voila, I got the headers working. Now we just need to remove the artifacts of Markdown. We do that with just find replace. We use a regex pattern and just remove that text. Now let's add a body to it. And that element should show up every time, except when it's a header. Look at that. We got a fancy little markdown editor, very basic, but I like speed, so let's speed this up. To speed this up, we're gonna install the 1T Input Watcher plugin from Eli. We put the element on the page, we add an ID to the multi-line input, and we use that same ID on the 1T uh, element. Now, we change the repeating group's source to point to that uh, 1T Input Watcher. and watch magic happen. That's it for the first part of this tutorial. Next, I'll show you how to add quotes, images, code highlighting, add tables, embed YouTube videos, and a bunch of other stuff. If you don't feel like waiting, there are a couple of templates you can buy. One is a building block. You can just add this to an existing app of yours. The other one is an actual blog. Questions, feedback, uh, updates, just follow the forum thread or drop me a message here in the comments or follow me on Twitter. Thanks.